Greetings, Zombie Slayers. Sleepy Jim here with my Easter egg guide for the Rick Dofen side of the Buried Easter Egg. This is also going to get you the Mind Games achievement for 75 Gamer Score. I'll be showing you all the steps in detail, the easiest way to get this done, and giving you some tips along the way as well. First up, what I recommend is that uh, you obviously have to have four players, and you should have a ton of points in the bank before you start this. It's not essential, but it makes it easier to complete it at an earlier round to buy all the stuff you need out of the box and so forth so you will need out of the mystery box the time bomb and the paralyzer to complete this easter egg so they are essential you will also need to have at least one player but i recommend all players get vulture aid for one part of the easter egg and i recommend speed collar as well for the last part of the easter egg but it is not essential now you will need Galvan Knuckles, or you can use the Bowie Knife or Ballistic Knife for one of the parts of the Easter Egg as well. Okay, let's listen to some dialogue to kick things off. Samuel Astrologer? What? Oh no, not again. Calm yourself, Samuel. The old friends here, are we not? Uh, not really. Me and Rossman are buddies, <laughs> but uh, I hate that guy. We have no time for such petty rivalries, my friend. I fear that masters may manipulate your companions into following his orders. Be a very convincing liar. I know this firsthand. For now, you must focus on only gaining control of the tower above ground. It is more important than you can possibly imagine. So, no pressure then? The components necessary to build an energy conduit to power the tower can all be sourced from this location. When you find them, you must ensure that they are not used to help Maxis. Okay, so as we heard from Rick Dovin, we need to build an energy conduit in the shape of a guillotine. So first up, what we're going to do is we are going to collect the four parts. The first one is the radar dish, which you can find outside at the top of the saloon. Add that to the guillotine as you go. We're going to go collect the next part now. These parts will always be in the same place. So once you know where they are, it is pretty easy to come back and pick them up. The next part you can find uh, in the room next to where the chalk marks are. So you can access that from the chalk uh, mark room or from the bank tunnel. And it is in the corner here, this spool of wire. And as we collect each of these, we're going to be adding these to the guillotine build. Okay, and get that done. The next part that we're going to collect is like an antenna, and that is found in the barn, in the lower floor of the barn. I'll show you where that is in a moment. Okay, we're going to pick that up over here. Pookie is kindly pointing it out for us here. And we're going to go add that to the guillotine as well. And then there's just the one last part that we need, which is the crystals. So let's add this to the guillotine over here. Now in terms of difficulty, this Easter egg is probably uh, a medium difficulty Easter egg compared to some that we've had in Black Ops and that in the past. But there's certain parts that can be super frustrating, guys, and you do need a fairly decent team to get this done. A team that can shoot straight, let's put it that way, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's grab the crystals in the mine here. And we're going to get back and we're going to add that to the guillotine to get that completed as well. Okay. So, uh, after that, what you want to do is find these four orbs around the map and you want to power those using the paralyzer. And the first one is outside the entrance to the saloon down there where you saw that. We're going to head up now to the uh, mine area to find the second one. There's no particular order for these. And it's around the corner here. So we'll power that one up as well. Alright, now let's go find the third orb. And this one is actually found... Uh, near the courthouse. So we'll go locate that one. Just here. And then we just have the fourth orb. 
to uh, power up. And that is at the backs of the uh, Haunted House. So you have to go through the Haunted Mansion, come out the back here, and then power it right here. Okay, now at this point, once you do that, you will get a floating lantern hovering above the main part of the map. So what you want to do is locate that. And uh, what we found was if you cook some grenades and uh, time it exactly right without killing yourself, you should be able to knock this thing down. We actually get it with two grenades at once there. And uh, run over and pick that up. And then what you need to do is you need to fill that with ghost souls. So you need about uh, eight or nine ghost souls. And you need to kill them in pro close proximity to the lantern and it will fill with their souls. You'll hear a like a pinging sound each time it fills with a ghost soul until you have enough. And Richtofen um, will let you know when that happens. And you will get to hear a pretty funny quote from Richtofen there. Telling us that he is keeping it up. Very good, very good <laughs> and disturbing at the same time. But anyway, once you have filled the uh, lantern with the ghost souls, the uh, next step is to place the lantern filled with those ghost souls on top of the gunsmith roof uh, opposite the saloon area. And we're going to head there now. Now, uh, once you get up there, you can jump across from the top of the uh, saloon balcony area up here. Or you can go around the other way via mule kick. Place that on the uh, lantern icon. And that will actually shine its light to reveal a code on the wall above it. Now that code is actually a Rosicrucian cipher. And uh, you need to decode this. So don't be too daunted looking at this. All you really need to decode, guys, is the very first letter for each line. Now there are five signs located in the mine area above the saloon. And you only have three of these in the code that you need to actually melee. So to decode this, let's have a look at what the Rosicrucian cipher is and how it works briefly here. So this is the Rosicrucian cipher. Basically, it uses a combination of the partial shape of the grid in which the letter is contained and a dot or line in the case of our game, which signifies the position of the desired letter within the grid. So we can use this to actually decipher the code that we have here in the Easter egg. If we look at the top line there and the first symbol there, it has a stroke on the far left side and it corresponds to this section of the grid that I've highlighted in red. So the far left letter there is the letter D in this case. The second line down, the first symbol that we have there has a red stroke on the far right side and it corresponds to this section of the grid here, the shape there that I've highlighted in red, so it is the letter L. Now when you decipher these, you will have three different signs each time. It is random that you need to decipher. Here is a cheat sheet for you guys. You only need to know and recognize the first letter for each line because they are all unique to the sign. So in our case, we have Dry Gold Shaft, Lunger Undermines, and Consumption Cross. So once you know which signs you need to hit, you need to use Galva Knuckles or you can use the Bowie Knife instead and we even found that the Ballistic Knife will work as well. Go and melee the signs, no particular order. Once you've activated them correctly, you will see the red mist coming off them and when you've done all three from the code, you will get the next part of the Easter egg, which is the Wisp. Now the Wisp, guys, is basically this glowing light. You can see that even through objects. So you need to chase this and collect it by walking into it, uh, basically. And it will move throughout the map in a random order each time, but it usually starts in the same spot. So what we found the easiest way to collect this, because if you don't collect it within a certain time limit, it will reset again and you have to keep repeating it. But uh, station a player around the power area, another player in the bank area, and perhaps another player in the barn area, as well as the player that hits the, uh, the signs and uh, activates it at the top. And usually you'll be able to cover all your bases with that to uh, eventually capture it, and it will attach itself here to the guillotine for the next part of the Easter egg. Okay, now the next part of the Easter egg is basically Richtofen will require you to kill 
zombies, the zombies with the glowing hands specifically. And what will happen is when you kill those near the guillotine, that glow will actually go to the crystals. You can see it revolving around the crystal there. And we need to get five of those glowing lights going around the crystal for this part of the Easter egg. And uh, you were just fooling around here with the old uh, paralyzer doing the uh, mega Superman dolphin dive. But uh, we'll be killing some zombies in a second here when they start spawning in and uh, getting those glowy lights happening here. So as I said, do try and do this Easter egg as early as you possibly can because the higher the round you get to, obviously, the harder it's going to get. And uh, always, always try to keep a crawler or at least a zombie at the end of each round uh, when you've got stuff to do for the Easter egg. Okay, so we got our five glowy lights going there. Now the next step that we'll have is basically going to require us to use the time bomb. So place the time bomb. We found the best spot was right on top of the bench here on the guillotine. And then at the end of a round, we'll place it at the end of the round uh, when you've got only one or two zombies left. Then everyone needs to gather around as close as they can to the guillotine, to the time bomb, and then activate the time bomb when you move into the next round. <coughs> That will then put you into an infinity round, which is pretty cool. It'll go all black and white, and you will actually find your own character bodies strewn throughout the map in random locations each time. I'm showing you a few of these locations here, but there are a ton of these locations, and you want to go up to the bodies and click X to search those. What we're looking for here is a switch for the guillotine. So uh, once you find that switch, you will need to place it on the guillotine, as we'll show you in a moment. But uh, there are a lot of these locations to look for, guys. There's one here where you find the parts for the nav card table uh, that you'll need to have uh, opened up that barrier to, uh, to access that one. Back around here where the jail is, we saw near the courthouse there outside the candy store. Uh, in the alleys, sort of outside the, gun, the gun, gun shop area and places like that. And in this case, we actually found the switch, although it will be different each time, on a body that was right up here, right near where we started. Right, in fact, uh, next to the guillotine itself. Okay, so once you have found the switch, um, by the way, in this infinity round, you can't actually kill the zombies. So it helps if you're having trouble to uh, have a bunch of monkeys you can throw while you're searching the bodies or uh, just to, to avoid them and stuff like that. Okay, so we're coming back to the normal time here. And uh, we're going to add the switch that we found in infinity round uh, to the guillotine here and then we'll activate the next part of the easter egg now the next part of the easter egg can be one of the most frustrating uh, parts uh, of the easter egg uh, because there are four colored switches you need to flick in the maze in the correct order now that sounds simple and it kind of is but the trouble is you don't know which order to flick them in and there's a possible 24 different combinations. Combine that with the fact that you have to find the switches to start with in a maze, it can get super annoying, okay? Now basically, if you get the order wrong, what will happen is you will need to go out of the maze and come back in via the haunted house to reset the switches again. So trust me, you'll, you will almost definitely need to uh, do this in more than one attempt. Okay, one little tip here though is if you get this spark like that, uh, basically that means that that switch was flicked in the correct order. Now here is another location to look out for guys on this bush here. Uh, a little tricky one there, it's not even on a gate. But uh, getting back to what I was saying, if you get one of the switches spark, you know that that switch was flicked in the correct order. So if it sparks when you flick it last, uh, you know it's, that, it's the last color to flick. So that actually narrows down from 24 to only six possible combinations. And hopefully that can help you a little bit get through that step uh, quicker. But anyway, once you have flicked all the switches in the correct order, guys, and it will be random each time, you'll actually unlock the wishing well. Now you need to have busted this using the giant at some point in the game. So it's basically the fountain out the front of the haunted house here. And uh, just over here, we're going to click on this in a second here. You can see... You press X to make a wish. Now when you do that, what will happen is four separate shooting galleries 
will start up around the map. The first one here is outside the candy store and you need to hit each of these targets correctly. Uh, everyone needs to do it at the same time in order to uh, finish the Easter egg and uh, to basically get the achievement. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the hardest sections, if not the hardest section of the Easter egg. And a lot of people found this super frustrating. So uh, what, all I can say here is uh, I would probably recommend that you use a wall weapon that you can buy ammo back for and that has a very large magazine capacity. We all in this uh, case ended up using uh, the uh, the PDW and here's the uh, the mansion guys. Uh, this is actually all dark You can get this to light up if you go around or two until the uh, ghost is back with the free perk It will actually all light up for you and make it a bit easier But uh, we managed to do it with the darkened mansion windows here uh, After a lot of practice you will know exactly where the targets will pop up But one little tip to help you guys is Make sure you go through and count all your targets and make sure you're seeing all of the targets in your area before you attempt it. So the saloon, for example, has 19 targets. The candy shop has 20 targets. The jailhouse has 22 targets. And the mansion has 23 targets. If you're counting the targets as you go, you can be 100% sure that you're seeing them all. And you, then you just have to kind of memorize the sequence and uh, hit them. Uh, along with everyone else in the game. So it can be a little frustrating if everyone gets gets their targets except for one player. But what I would say is, if you do miss at any point, just shout out to your team so they don't keep wasting ammo trying to complete it and then just wait and restart. It's a fairly quick sequence, so you can uh, repeat it uh, uh, fairly often in a short period of time. And this is the, uh, the shooting gallery that I was taken care of here the uh, the jailhouse this one is uh, is a little challenging towards the end because I actually have uh, almost six targets at once pop up for the end sequence so yeah that was uh, that was quite challenging but uh, after a lot of practice um, it's it's not too bad once you work out which targets to hit first and you can see with the PDW uh, basically, because in this area I had 22 targets, the PDW has 50, a 50 round magazine. So even if you fire two shots per round, you're going you're gonna to basically not have to reload at all with this thing. That's why it's so good. So there you go, guys. That is the Mind Games achievement completed. Now, after you have completed this, you get the reward of having all the perks uh, for all players. And even if you get downed or bleed out completely during the game and come back the next round, you will still have all those perks, which is pretty awesome. Uh, sort of like the moon easter egg. But that's not all, guys. If you come into the back of the courthouse, there's a box here with the lights on it. Now, the lights represent the players, and the top line there is myself. I've completed all three of the Richtofen Easter eggs in Black Ops 2 maps so far. The other players have done either one or two of the uh, Richtofen Easter eggs. If everyone in the game has completed all the Richtofen Easter eggs, that will be all lit up, and you can actually press a button on that, which will activate an end game type sequence with Richtofen, which is uh, super cool, guys. But there you go please remember guys to rate and comment it was a lot of work for me to get this uh, put together I'm also going to have a uh, little uh, credits at the end for the people that helped me in the Easter egg go check out their channels as well the ones that do have uh, YouTube channels that help me in this I'll put a link there in the description also but for now it is Slipper Jim out thanks for watching